Hey guys, it's Not Lammers of Invoke 101. Welcome back. And today we're going to be taking a look at a deck that I've put off for a while. Um, I want to apologize to Mio and Tyler because I told them this deck profile would be out a lot sooner. But um, I ended up getting the cards I was proxying in this deck, and then, um, and then I was just like, oh, now I can just record the profile with the, without proxies. So it just ended up being better. But um, this is actually a, a deck Mio is really excited to show off. This is her Burning of This Phantom Knight uh, deck. So, it's something she's been working on for a while, and uh, we finally got all the cards for it, and with Graf and Seer coming off the list, she really wanted to show this deck off, so, um, yeah, let's get right into it. I'm going to set the extra deck and spells and traps off to the side, and then we'll get right into the main deck monsters. Uh, first off is my personal favorite, uh, Skarm, Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. Uh, before moving forward, um, all the Burning Abyss monsters have a couple shared effects, so all of them... Uh, they all have the effect if you control a non-burning abyss monster they blow up they just destroy themselves instantly and then they have two effects but you can only activate one of those two effects per turn so like you can't use both and that is they can all special summon themselves from the hand if you control no spells and traps and the other effect is an if they're sent to grave effect skarms if he's sent to grave is that you get to in the end phase search a level three dark fiend which is pretty cool Oh, all the Burning Abysses are also Dark Fiend level 3s, so uh, kind of an awkward level, but also a very useful level as we as we found out uh, throughout the game. Uh, next up is Farfa, his, and I'm not going to repeat the other effects, so just know that all the Burning Abysses except for one of them do, and I'll talk about the one, the weird guy. Uh, but anyway, Farfa's If Sent to Grave is that you can target a face-up monster on the field, or is it target a monster on the field, doesn't have to be face up, and change it and banish it. I was gonna say change it to face down. Uh, banish it uh, until the end phase. So he's really cool for just outing problematic monsters, uh, which is really nice. Next up we have the newly uh, semi-limited Seer. Uh, Seer's if sent to grave is you can special summon a burning abyss monster from your graveyard. It does target, so you target a BA, summon a BA from grave, and it can't be Seer. Uh, but Seer is really good, uh, and he's also like one of the beefier Burning Abyss monsters with 1600 attack, because like they're at, the main deck ones are kind of small, they don't output a lot of damage, so, uh, but Seer is really nice. And then there's also uh, Graph, which does the same thing as Seer, except it summons from deck, so, um, just, if it's sent to Grave, special summon a Burning Abyss monster from the deck. Really cool, really nice, and it's really good to have these guys at two, because these are the main, these are kind of like the main Burning Abyss dudes, they're like the, um, the starters, the extenders. Another extender that's really cool is Libic. Uh, I actually really like Libic. I think he's uh, one of the better Burning Abyss monsters. Um, and he, his effect is if he's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a Burning Abyss from the hand, but negate its effects, which is really nice. Um, like, that's strangely convenient. Uh, and then we have two Barbar. Uh, Barbar's uh, if sent to grave effect is that you can target three Burning Abyss cards that aren't Barbar and then banish those targets, and if you do, inflict 300 damage per card banished uh, for Barbar. So really cool. And then we have Alich, which is our one of. We have two one ofs. Uh, the first one is Alich, which lets you target a face-up monster on the field and negate its effects, which is really nice. I used to think he did something with spells and traps, but I think that's a different card. And then we have Rubik. Rubik is the weird one. Um, so he shares the, if you control no spells and traps, special summon it. Uh, if you control a non-burning abyss, blow it up. But his other effect is that he can't be used for the synchro summon of anything except a burning abyss monster. Ooh. So that's a little weird. Um, but at the same time, I get it. He also has 2100 defense, so he's really beefy. Um, as far as, like, defending goes. Um, which might be one of the reasons that they didn't give him an if sent to grave effect, but I think the reason they didn't is just because he's a tuner. But uh, that's actually it for the Burning Abyss monsters. Uh, that's all the, the regular Burning Abyss monsters. Um, yeah, like, uh, but there are more things in the deck that do support them. So let's talk about the Burning Abyss support monsters, which are uh, Fiendish Rhino Warrior. This guy says fiend type monsters you control except Rhino Warrior can't be destroyed by battle or artifacts, which means Burning Abysses don't blow themselves up. Very useful for them. And then he, if he's sent to the graveyard, 
you can uh, send a fiend from your deck to the graveyard except Rhino Warrior, um, and you can only use this effect of Rhino Warrior once per turn. So really cool, 1400, 900, um, really nice monster. The only issue with him is that he's Earth, uh, but he was made, I feel it in my heart, he was made for Burning Abyss. Uh, next up after that is the final uh, Burning Abyss support monster, which is three tour guide. I know Mio really wants to get one more of the alternate art tour guides. Um, and if you don't know what tour guide does, she uh, on normal summon, you special summon a level three fiend from your deck, uh, but it has its effects negated and it can't be used as synchro. So, uh, but a really good monster, really easy. It's a one card Cherubini. Um, it also enables you to go into your combos because you can summon this, summon Graph, and then you can uh, proceed to start doing a bunch of things from there. Or Graph will summon Seer, and then Cherubini will dump another one, or potentially dump a Seer from the from the deck, um, or a Libic to get one out of the hand, and then you can start doing more and more plays that way. But yeah, so a tour guide at three is a really nice thing. Um, after that. We have the last monsters of the deck, which is two Phantom Knight Ancient Cloak and two Phantom Knight Silent Boots. Uh, this is the Phantom Knight package that she runs as far as monsters go. And I don't know if she plays Rhoda, but we're gonna find out. Let me find out real quick. No, <laughs> no Rhoda, but that's okay. Uh, usually we're dumping these off of Cherubini because Cherubini can just send level threes. So that's really nice. And then this gets your engine and whatnot going uh, for that. Um, but these are also mostly for Bard each and things like that. But with that said, that is the main deck monsters. Moving into the spells and traps, I, uh, Mio actually only plays a grand total of four spell cards, that being three Allure of Darkness to get the draws, and one Foolish Burial to Foolish Away, uh, any Burning Abyss or Phantom Knight you might need. This is realistically just one of the strongest cards in the strategy. Um, she, uh, we could also play Rhoda, but I think she wanted to keep it pretty slim. Um, but she also is playing a kind of neat card that I'm excited to show off. Um, and I know she's really excited to show that card too. So let's move those off to the side and we'll talk about the traps, which begins with three Fog Blade. This is for Bard each and also just to search off the Phantom Knights in case we see those. And then she's playing uh, two Mist Claws to recover the Phantom Knights and also just get an extra body on board. Uh, one Wing for the protection, one Shade Brigadine for the link, and then she's also playing three Dark Sacrifice. So if you don't know what Dark Sacrifice says, it says when your opponent activates a card or effect, they'll destroy a card on the field, which I believe can include stuff like Crystal Wing. Like if it would negate and destroy, you can flip this up against it because it would destroy a card. Um, and then it says negate the effects, then send a level three or lower dark from your deck to the graveyard. So uh, sadly, it's not a counter trap. I remember that being one of the biggest things that like she complained about was that it wasn't a counter trap and uh, which, yeah, this would be much stronger if it was a counter trap. But um, it's still a really cool card. I know that she's been really excited to add this into her deck because um, honestly, there is a lot of stuff that does destroy this format. Um, like you can't. Uh, like it, this itself doesn't destroy, so this is actually really good against Dragoon, because what you can do is you can set it and then flip it against Dragoon when he would attempt to pop something if you go first, and then just negate it. It doesn't go, it won't go through, and then uh, you get to dump a, a Burning Abyss or Phantom Knight. Uh, unfortunately, Dragoon usually gets two pops, and almost always gets two pops, which is kind of sad. But uh, with that, that is the main deck. So I'm gonna jump into the extra and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, one Levier, this is to recover banished monsters. I don't think she actually goes into this very much. It's just in here because it's been in here. And then two uh, Phantom Knights Break Swords. Uh, Break Sword is a really cool monster and it's very useful in this strategy mainly because of the Phantom Knight stuff and I believe that's why she's playing it is just for an out to certain things because while it does target, um, it can recover Phantom Knights and it can make rank fours and other things and just extend you even farther. Uh, then, oh, I dropped him. Uh, she is playing Triple Dante, the Traveler of the Burning Abyss. Um, this is just standard for Burning Abyss. I know Mio really likes Burning Abyss, and Dante is their boss monster, so um, I under, like, it makes complete sense why you'd want to play this, because he does recover Burning Abyss cards. He gets the mill three, gets big, and then all, after attacking, he swaps to defense mode. He's a very well or poorly designed monster, depending how you feel about that. And then uh, One Lady B. Uh, because you can just rank Dante up into this. And then uh, on the next turn, 
uh, she can summon. She can dump any card from the deck to the grave. Uh, then we play one Virgil. Uh, basic, I believe he's like discard and draw a card or something. He's not very good. Uh, and then one Dante Pilgrim. This is to summon off of Lady B because he's actually kind of intense. He's a little bit of a hassle to deal with. Uh, for Lynx, one Wee Witch, one Bard each uh, for the combos, and then two Cherubini. If you uh, want, I actually recommend, because this isn't a full extra deck, I recommend some of the Nightmares, specifically um, Cerberus and Phoenix. Those are really good in Burning Abyss strategies. We just didn't have any spare that are either in something else. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely these guys, I think um, this is kind of like the core of what you do in her and mine and Mio's opinion, the core of what you'd want to play for this build. Um, and I noticed that she's been testing this out and she's still evolving it and she's really excited for the new Phantom Knight stuff to come out and try that out with this. So, um, yeah, uh, with that said, that is the deck. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this deck in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and why you're down there. Uh, down in the description, there are some links, including a link to the Discord if you feel like supporting the channel, as well as clicking that subscribe button. And with that said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.